Good morning, my people. It is 6.27 on June 24th, and I don't know what this video is going to be exactly. Um, it is the middle of the summerathon, and I am starting this hunk of book. Oh snap, I almost lost my place. Um, I'm having this as my read. One of my challenges, one of the challenges for the summer I find, because the parchment paper matches like the orange color. Um, I have, I filmed my summer TBR, but it's just too late to put it up now, so what I was thinking, I was going to put it in front of this video after this little clip. So this is like my little introductory, so I want to put my summer TBR right now. There are six challenges. I am not going to be reading six books. I am going to be doubling up on some challenges and I'm on Heather's announcement video, Bookables. I love her. Um, so I'm just going to show you the books that I plan on reading in the upcoming week. Yeah, challenge number one, it's read a beachy read. Now, I'm going to hold up this book and y'all are going to say, you're fucking crazy. I may be. And you may think that I'm not going to finish this book in a week. And with reading other books, I'm definitely not going to get very far. But my be reasoning behind this book is that once I say the name, you'll know exactly which book I'm talking about. Lynn manuel Miranda saw this book in a airport bookstore on his way to a vacation with his wife and he picked it up and read it and then this is what inspired him to make the show Hamilton so I'm going to be reading this it's a BT read he wrote it on vacation so it's a vacation read I'm not going to finish it in a week challenge number two is read a book with sunrise colors this could easily fit that challenge too because it's like a light yellow orange all around it look the parchment color it's like sunrise colors but I picked out a book for this and it's like orange it's really orange on the back so these are some sunrise colors right up in here and it is curses and smoke a novel of Pompeii by Vicky Alvere Schechter. Challenge number three is to read a book featuring a road trip, traveling, or summer vacation. I'm going to read a nonfiction for this, and I'm going to read Walking Denial by Levison Wood. It is not exactly a road trip, but it is a walking expedition from the source of denial in Rwanda all the way down to the Mediterranean Sea. He walks the entire length of denial through, uh, 13 different countries, I think. He walks through six nations, Rwanda, Tanzania, Uganda, South Sudan, the Republic of Sudan, and Egypt. Challenge number four is to read a book set in summer. I don't know if any of these books are set in summer. Alexander Hamilton might be set in summer, or Pompeii might be set in summer. I don't know, but I know Walking the Nile takes place in winter he starts his walking in December so um, and challenge number five is read a book with food on the cover I'm not doing that challenge and challenge number six read your nah, drink your favorite summary drink while reading and I'm going to be drinking some sweet tea and I'm going to be reading final draft while drinking my drink this was the pick for the dragon and tea book club on Goodreads and um, they've already read it. They have set dates and set chapters and I did not get to it in time. My library didn't have uh, any copies available to me at the time but I'm going to read it and then I'm going to check out the discussion. So, And I've been dying to read this. This is my Summerathon TBR. It starts on Friday in two days and I don't know how well I'm going to do because I'm still reading you and the buzzword readathon it's over. 
So I failed that. So, yep, here's my stack of books. Oh, snow! Sorry. I hope you enjoyed that TBR. I don't know if I'm going to get to those books because I'm trying to read this one. Uh, it's due back on July 2nd. And I'm not going to finish this before July 2nd. I'm not. But I'm going to try to get through a good chunk of it. And when I take it back, I'm just going to re, uh, put a new hold on it because somebody else wants it. And it's the only one in my library system. I'm going to do kind of like a reading vlog on this book when after I get through reading the chapters because I want to talk about it. I've already read the prologue and I didn't know that after he was shot at, in the duel that he was still bad mouthed by Thomas Jefferson and everybody else and that seems like not something that wouldn't happen it's kind of like yeah they're still gonna do it they're assholes but to be honest I don't remember learning anything about Alexander Hamilton in school I didn't know there was a duel I didn't know who Aaron Burr was the only thing I knew about Hamilton was that he was on our money and Eliza Schuyler Eliza Hamilton she was apparently dear friends with uh, George Washington she was close and I d I learned most about what I know about Hamilton now from the musical and and, it, and I knew that Eliza and George Washington were close because she helped build the monument or I don't know I'll learn about it but he apparently gave her a a some kind of box and if you can hear Luna she's trying to get into the room she's all right She's just being clingy, and it's early morning. Can you say good morning? Take a oh, now you don't want to speak? No? Okay. <laughs> Hi. See? Look at yourself. No? Why are you doing all that whining? You know I'll let you in eventually. A little queen. <sighs> yeah, that was the prologue. I already learned something. Uh, and she... <coughs> after she lost her Hamilton. She called him Hamilton. She called him by her last name. By his last name. He, She still defended him and stuck up for him. And tried to keep his... Um, values and morals in check and say no he wasn't like that and but he cheated on her and he wrote it down and she still defends him that's a woman um and i just read it like oh snap oh snap okay and i read the first paragraph of the first chapter of the first chapter is called Castaways and it talks about the island that Alexander Hamilton was born on Nevis or Nevis I don't know how you pronounce it I'm going to say Nevis because it's N-E-V-I-S Nevis in the uh, Caribbean and how it's like a volcano so that's like the first paragraph and yeah so I want to come back and talk about every single chapter because I want to document this. I want to keep a running thing going with this and like keep it. So if I ever forget I can come back and watch it. Hey can you not meow? <laughs> You're a beautiful squirrel. Hey guys reading update. I'm gonna be whispering because my family's asleep. Um, finished chapter one. Yeah, I read chapter one 
earlier this morning after I filmed my intro to this vlog and I enjoyed it. Um learned about the mom how she had an older sister named Anne and her siblings died in childhood. Uh learned about the father, James Hamilton, how he was from Scotland and he was the black sheep of his family and his brothers was always bailing him out and giving him money and paying his debts and his mother was uh, an island jumper she left two husbands she was married and then had a legitimate son and she left that son with the father who smeared her and called her her an adulterer and took everything she had after she died and didn't leave nothing for Alexander or his other illegitimate brother Jonathan or James Jr. and it talks about St. Bart, not St. Bart, St. Croix, St. Kitts, the Caribbean islands and it talks about slaves and how uh, there was always mulatto uh, babies being born because on the islands there was more black slaves than white citizens and uh, when the Europeans came to visit they were uh, when the Europeans came to like try to build their own plantations they saw the ratio of black the Africans to the whites and how how the Africans were in close proximity to the whites and that was frowned upon and how they had to keep getting more and more slaves and how they would measure and weigh them after they would get through off the boat from the middle passage and I that sickened me the whole slave part is just it's awful and how even the poor whites had slaves and they would rent their slaves out for income which is <sighs> yeah it, that part bothered me um and it also brought up a theory that James Hamilton might not be Alexander Hamilton's father at all. So, I need to keep reading. I'm going to read chapter 2 tonight. And this, just reading this book scares me because I feel like it's going to fall apart on me. It's that flimsy. So, but, I will be buying my own copy to have for my kids because if I enjoyed the first chapter then um yeah I am still going to be doing a, a video all about my favorite non-fictions and how to read non-fiction because I know most people don't particularly like non-fiction they think it's boring you just have to I've learned in the past year how to read nonfiction. You gotta be in the mood, you gotta be, you gotta have the topic you like. But I will go into it in a different video all about that. So I'm gonna go read chapter two and then I wanna call it a night. Update time. I have read chapter two. It was called The Hurricane and oh, I didn't tell you today. It is Tuesday, it's the next day and 644 um yeah this the second title the second chapter was titled the hurricane it was about alexander hamilton's time as a shipping clerk for beekman and kruger and then court i think i said that right and kruger how he was in charge of uh shipping rates and inventory and prices and all this but let's <coughs> It was also over, uh, he would see the slaves come in and how 
before they were sold, they were oiled up to show their muscles. And he would weigh them and measure their height to try to get the best price for them. And that eventually played into his um, abolitionist um, plans because he was sickened by it. And once the slave was sold, they were branded with uh, hot pokers with the initials of their new master and it talks about the hurricane how it basically decimated the sugar crops and left the island in ruin it talks about his writing and how he was a self-educated young man and he put his writing about the hurricane in the newspaper and that got everybody to put up a collection for him to send him to um, North America to be educated. Uh, I'm not going to go into much detail about these chapters because I don't want to spoil. If you do want to read this book, uh, I suggest taking notes because it will be easier. This is my note taking. It would be easier to remember. and. It has some lines that you can really tell were in the show. Chapter 3 is done. It was called The Collegian and it was, um, it started off talking about the boat he was on sailing from his island to, uh, the North America. How it caught on fire and how the, um, seamen had to go into the sea to get the water and it kept putting out the fires and stuff like that and it talks about Princeton King's College how the president of King's College was very into getting young men from the West Indies Islands to come to King's College and or not King's College Princeton and Hamilton was rejected from Princeton because he was too old. I didn't know that 12, 13, 14 year olds went to college back in the day. Well, I knew they went to college, but not that young. And that if you were 15 or older, you were too old to go. It talks about how King's College is, was centered right in the middle of New York and how it was right next to the red light district and that women weren't allowed on the grounds which is total bull. It talked about how Hamilton's first friend in the colonies or in New York was Hercules Mulligan and he was a tailor and right when I read that uh, I just went to a song and the rapping it was I'm enjoying this book so much so far and I'm only a little bit into it. See, this little bit gives me so much happiness because I know I can get through this. And yeah, so I may be able to read it before I have to take it back to the library next Tuesday. So I have a week to finish this book. Wish me luck. Uh, the fourth chapter is called The Pen and the Sword. It's mentioned Washington and Lexington and Concord, and it's talking about, it talked about the Boston Tea Party. So I'm about to read chapter four, and I'll get back to you. This is going to be a long ass video. Okay, it is Wednesday, June 26th. It is 2 p.m. And I, yesterday, I read chapter four and chapter five. Yeah, I read chapter four and chapter five. Not through much of it, but I am still reading it, obviously. Um, chapter 4 and Chapter 5 are basically the same thing. Chapter 4 is when Alexander Hamilton first glimpsed George Washington and his future father-in-law, Philip Schuyler, and he uh, basically talks about Continental Congress and the Redcoats coming, it mentions Paul Revere, uh, Chapter 5. It's all about uh, 
him fighting in the battles and George Washington offer him an aid spot and Alexander Hamilton being miffed that he's going to be chained to a desk but he is like basically the voice for George Washington uh, he wrote, uh, wrote and gave George Washington's orders to other people and yeah and it talks about how he was like a ladies man he was a big flirt I'm not going to go into much detail because I feel like I'll spoil it. And plus, it's a lot to remember. It jumps from one thing to the next. And, yeah. And plus, if I seem like I'm <laughs> jittery, I just watched a new episode of The Handmaid's Tale. <sighs> Intense AF. Uh, I'm touching my mouth because this the episode with the rings in the mouth to keep the handmaid silent. Ugh. But yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna read some of this and I got some other things to do. I woke up late and I've been shaky ever since the episode ended. That was just too real. Yeah. If you watch The Handmaid's Tale and you're watching the new season, if you're up to date on it, comment down below. Let me, I need someone to talk to about this. Okay. I'm going to read. Or possibly watch Buffy. I don't know. And I have to edit my mid-year book freakout tag. Hopefully it'll be up before this one. Because I'm running out of space. Again, I'm on brand. Another object equally important, and which our enthusiasm rendered us a little capable of regarding. I mean a principle of strength and stability in the organization of our government and vigor in its operations. June 28th, and I haven't updated y'all on my rating. Of course, the summer thon is over and I failed miserably, but hey ho. Uh, I'm just starting chapter 14 of Alexander Hamilton, and the book is due back on Tuesday. I may get away with uh, keeping it a couple days after and not get fined because my library is closed on Wednesdays and then July 4th is on Thursday so my library probably won't open until Friday but I just got a uh, audible and I downloaded Alexander Hamilton and I'm listening to it and reading along I'm listening to it at 1.5 speed and it's going by quicker um it's talking about the confederate articles of the confederation and the uh federalist papers all 80 something and it's getting a little boring because it's talking about all of how the government is basically running uh, impeachment uh, senate house representatives uh how long a president can run how many terms uh that the president is responsible for his behavior we know that's went to shit um trump but yeah, it's, he's just had his fourth child, James Alexander with Eliza. He hasn't done any infidelity yet, but he is, it's already said multiple times that he was the first major sex scandal in America. So we haven't gotten to that yet. Um, but it keeps talking about Aaron Burr and his wife Theodosia and his daughter Theodosia. Um talking about the New York governor George Clinton and how he was against the Constitution and the Constitution was just ratified with New York being the last following Virginia and that the uh, citizens of New York wanted to change the name to Hamiltonia and that there was a ship that was in a 4th of July parade. I'm reading this around in such a good time. Um, there was a ship called the Hamilton in the parade, and yeah, so I'm about to start chapter 14. I'm going to keep going like this. I'm not going to, like, talk about every chapter, but I've enjoyed his personal life so far, but when it comes to the government and how many, he was a freaking writing machine, let me tell you. 
and keeps talking about the government. I know all of the basics about the government and what happens in the American government. It's boring. So. But I am enjoying overall what I've gotten so far. I'm on page 270 of 800 pages. So, am I going to finish this book before Tuesday? Who the hell knows? Um, it's Friday. It's 8.30 and I'm listening to a biography. With my kids in bed. And my husband's at the store getting us something sweet to eat. Because I need something sweet. Okay, I'm going to go back to my book. And also, like... My life has just been put on the wayside. I'm work if I'm not working, I'm reading. If I'm not reading, I'm working. Uh I'm not watching any YouTube. My YouTube videos have been pushed to the way back because I want to read this book. I've been wanting to read it ever since I heard the musical and I got it and I'm just putting all my time into it. So Yeah. Alright. My phone is vibrating at me so my battery's about to die okay i'm on chapter 18 i just started and uh they're still talking about the banks and how jefferson and adams were against a central bank and how basically during washington's first term i think i think he only did one term didn't he i don't know um, basically during his first term, he was basically following Hamilton's economic plan and how the southern plantation owners, they would use their receipts for their tobacco as money. And, yeah. It's still not boring, but, mm. I know all this. Okay, two things. I am at the part where they're arguing on the first bank and how it's very, our government has and will always be a hot mess. And second, um, they're arguing over a bank and how the founding father, some of the founding fathers didn't want a bank and how some did. Even Washington didn't want a bank, but yet he signed a bank bill because Hamilton fought for it and wrote, like, uh, how many words? So many fucking words. Uh, and now, today, if you look on almost every street corner, there's a bank. I live in a small town of 500 people. My town, well, no. It's under 500 people. Yeah. We have two banks in my small town. And there may be a third being built. <laughs> so our found <laughs> If our founding fathers were alive today and they saw the amount of banks, they would shit themselves. 